Cyril David, um, better known probably online as Six and Twitter and GitHub. And I co-founded Open Redis with Michelle Martins, dependable Redis hosting if you need it. So we're available as a Heroku add-on if you're on Heroku. So yeah, Lean. Lean can be summarized in seven principles. So I'll go by these seven principles a little bit briefly. The first is eliminate waste. So what does, what does that mean? Like waste is simply put like everything not adding value to the customer. Amplify learning means like if you have a team, it's better if you try to understand your domain as a whole, like talking to customers, writing code, just getting, it, getting things done and just improving your overall knowledge of your existing application. Decide as late as possible means just not relying on like uncertain assumptions, uh, not relying on hunches, guesses, just uh, rely on facts and deliver as fast as possible, just shorter iterations, faster release cycles, faster time to market. Empower the team means um, instead of having the manager decide what to like, what to build or like how to build things or like which tools to use, you empower like your developers, you involve them in the decision making process like should we use like this tool over that tool or like this database over that, that database. And building integrity, uh, just like making sure your application is cohesive as a whole. And seeing the whole means just if you have like a team of five or a team of 10, just making sure everyone is like on the same page, like they know about Lean, uh, just everyone knows about the overarching vision of like the whole application you're trying to build. I realized like, it's like, a huge topic in itself to discuss in one presentation, so if you want to know more about clean software, I encourage you to just uh, read the book. It's very great. For the purposes of my talk, I want to focus on the first uh, principle, which is eliminating waste. And specifically, like, waste in the form of unnecessary code and like unnecessary functionality. So a bit of a trivia, like who here knows like how many lines of code Bundler has? Like just the bin and the lib folder. Anyone? 7,000? Higher. Okay. So it has 9,020 lines of code just like in the bin and lib folder. And when you require Bundler, it adds 10 megabytes of RAM to your application's runtime. For isolate, uh, you have 453, and it adds eight megabytes. I, real, I realize there's like kind of a disparity there, why it's like eight megabytes with 453, I don't know why. And like, we use a tool called Depth. We don't require it at all to our runtime, and just like manually require files. So we don't add anything to the runtime. Now, a different by like, comparison, you have like 230,000 lines of Rails code. Like the previous sensor, presenter was showing how he was debugging like 10 URL fours or 10 link twos or something. And it's like just a lot of code. For Sinatra, you get 5,000. And like for Cuba, we have like 200, 200 lines of code. And as a consequence of like the complexity versus the simplicity, yeah, like a faster, uh, faster application without trying to like do caching initially or just writing simple stuff. It makes it faster. And like one day, I was I was a real user. So one day I just th stopped and think like, how much of that do I actually use? Like I have two hundred thirty thousand lines of code when I like do a Rails application and have a hello world. Like how much of that do I actually use? And I kind of said, like, made an experiment for myself and thought that as a hypothesis, maybe I'm using like 50 to 90, I'm wasting 50 to 90%. Uh, 
just a wild guess. So I just like sought out simple tools and instead of using Rails, like what if I use Kiva or Ohm and Redis instead of like using MongoDB and Monguide and OSC instead of using Rescue. That instead of Bundler. And previously I, I had 230,000 lines of code like initially, like without even adding any kind of plugins. And like the new version I had just 40,000 lines of code, like that's including your object rela relational mapper and everything else. So depending on how much you use of Rails, we're talking like 94% waste. Like there's a million methods there just sitting there not being used. Like you're just, your app is like this tiny and your Rails application like by default is like this, this huge. So that, that kind of was insane for me. Of course, like there are some downsides Maybe, like, if you're used to Rails, maybe it's a steeper learning curve, but uh, maybe arguable. Um, so, of course, I needed to relearn everything, and that took, like, a month of, like, parsing all the code, reading through everything. But after a while, like, you just really need to know Ruby that well. I mean. Like, it taught me, like, how to read Ruby, like, without using Rails console or without using any crutch, just, like, bare Ruby. So I thought, like, maybe slower development will happen or something, but after, like, two months of using these simple tools, I realized I'm faster, in fact, I develop applications faster because, like, I have a deeper, like, understanding of everything. So, of course, performance, like as you saw, you get performance as a consequence of simplicity, uh, deeper understanding of things, like you have 10 libraries each, like in hundreds of lines of code instead of like hundreds of thousands. And like, yeah, you have more control. You, you, instead of like trying to wrestle with something with just like a giant mammoth, you have like tiny little tools that you could change or add to or contribute to if you have something. So just showing our toolkit, like we use Cuba for like the web framework similar to Sinatra. We have Ohm for like the object relational mapping for uh, using Redis behind OSD for a queuing instead of like rescue and Moat for the view layer instead of like ERB, Haml or something else and shield for the authentication library instead of device, and Qtest, like just, so we, something that forks tests and makes it a bit faster. So if, if you ever wanted to get started with what we are doing, like you could easily use our generation tool. I think Michelle presented GN earlier. So you could do this and you will get like, this file, as you can see, like I want to highlight three uh, important concepts here. Like instead of having magical requires, we just require th files manually. Like it's everything is explicit, and like we just use rack middleware, and we have a plugin system which decouples a lot of things. Views views look pretty similar to like maybe Jinja or something but it's pretty much like what you get with ERB. And like as a last note, I wanted to show like our entire template engine is like this, this, this much, like that's the directives for parsing like the one-liners and like the interpolations and like that's, that's the entire template engine. Like we don't need any more. Questions?